Hello, everyone. Greetings. Um, oh, should probably move this guy over here. It's nothing but professionalism here on the uh, Taze Valley Classic Computer Club. Even though it is Saturday uh, and it's not a normal meeting time, um, we uh, I'm I'm going to be doing some uh, solo Classic Computer Club work on this. This is a Power Mac G3 blue and white. Code named Yikes, I think. Um, this is uh, one of the Macs that uh, first attracted my attention when I started uh, getting into the platform uh, towards the end of my collegiate life, was, which was in the uh, early 2000s. I'd say 2000 through 2003 was when I first started noticing Macs. Before then, I had a Mac Plus that I bought uh, in high school, but other than that, Macs weren't really on my radar, really. PCs in general weren't on my radar. I was all console all the time, um, but uh, I started using Finale and uh, Pro Tools and some other programs on the Mac, and I couldn't help but notice just how beautiful they were compared to the PC. So uh, this evening will be Looking at this G3, uh, opening it up, I have not opened it up yet. I bought a lot of two of these. So um, in the hopes, well, they came is a lot, but the hope is that if there is something that has not been, uh, if there's something not working from the two, I can salvage at least one working unit. Um, hello, Michael. Welcome. Um, so I'm going to actually, I've got my monitors hooked up in a weird kind of place. Uh, so I'm going to open up the chat on my phone and that way I won't have to glance over quite so often. How are you Michael? Everything going well? And uh, you're part of California. I know in southern part in the Bay Area it's not good times with the power outages and all that stuff. Um, but uh, I hope you're doing okay. Let's see if I can get. How do I do this? All right. And then we'll set that right there. So I'll be able to see. Working on the game. Do you have any info on uh, the next project from Greyborn Studios after all the Luna stuff is done? Is there anything in the pipeline? Or will you all retire from your riches and just drift about the Pacific on your yachts? Oh, that's great. I'm glad to hear it, Michael. Okay, so um, we're going to start by just dusting off the top of this thing. So um, I'm going to tilt this thing up and over. I don't have a whole lot of room to play, but uh, as you can see, the top of this is pretty dusty. It's not looking so good, so we're going to just kind of take a Swiffer and uh, dust this whole thing off. Okay, well definitely keep me in the loop. Um, you know, with whatever you want to share publicly, and of course, if there's anything you want to share privately, I won't disclose that. But uh, I'd love to make sure that on Amigos we can promote whatever you're working on to the best of our ability, because uh, we love having friends in the biz, as it were. And by the biz, I mean the industry. All right. So yeah, pretty grimy. On the back, I've already connected the ports just as a dry run. But we'll unconnect those. So this is during the uh, original reign of the Plastic Fantastic. When Steve Jobs uh, first returned to Apple. Uh, the G3 
line, I believe, was already in full sway. Uh, the, there were some G3 towers, uh, and there were some G3 clones as well. Um, Power Computing, I think, was the major clone manufacturer. And in our computer lab in the music library, we had several clone systems running OS 9. Um, I'm going to uh, quickly change my display here and make sure that I don't want my display to go to sleep on me because this is how I'm seeing the chat. Okay, hopefully that works. All right, so, uh, but anyway, um, when Steve came back, he updated the outer form of the blue and white G3, but he also, um, he also made it uh, some internal uh, difference. There, there's a whole different motherboard in here, uh, much more powerful than the earlier G3 towers. Um, however, you know, one good thing, bring this a little bit closer here, and bring it, bring it down, there we go. One good thing about the uh, G3, well, kind of an interesting thing is that uh, there were so many different form factors of G3s. Um, there wasn't just the tower and uh, the laptop. That was one of the things that Steve mandated was that, you, you know, the simplification of the line. But there was a all-in-one G3 uh, that was not an iMac. Uh, it was a different sort of all-in-one <laughs> computer. Uh, they had the tower G3. Then there was also a mini tower. It was like a half height tower, um, and so there were there were all these different different specs. And of course, within those lines, you had a bunch of different speed and and storage and RAM options and that sort of thing. It's uh, I still you know there's a lot of people that mock the uh, multicolored plastic hues of Apple's uh, G3 computers. But for me, I think that um, the, the, the blue, the teal, I guess, it always looked kind of nice, you know? It wasn't an offensive color. And later on in the iMac line, there were a whole range of colors. Uh, they had uh, not only colors, but also patterns. There was the Dalmatian pattern, um, it's a Flower Power iMac. Uh, people kept buying them and they kept making them. The G3 iMac actually uh, existed for quite a long time. And part of that was the variety of colors that you could buy it in. Because the G3 iMac was not a particularly good computer. What it had going for it was that it had uh, internet connect wireless internet connectivity available through the airport card right out of the box, and it was it was one of the first PCs that really made it easy to uh, get online with high speed wireless internet. Um, and of course, uh, the USB was a big a big thing. The fact that it didn't have a um, the fact that it didn't have a uh, disk drive was very controversial at the time but Apple saw the future and the future was not <laughs> not the three and a half inch disk drive um, but of course lots of people had an external one that they used I believe that uh, the first iMac shipped with iOS 8 8.5 I want to say I don't think it shipped with 9.2. I think 9.2 might have been introduced about a year in to the IMAX life. And then, of course, about a year after that, you had the first iterations of OS X. But they were so unbelievably buggy. I remember when OS X was first installed on the uh, computers in the lab, 
and I, you, you, I mean, you'd open, you try and open one thing, and it would just crash over and over and over again. It wasn't until 10.2, which I believe was Panther. No, 10.4 10 was Panther. I'm not sure what 10, 10. or maybe I don't know. I can't remember the cat names. I'm sorry, but uh, 10.2 was was okay. Uh, 10.3. They added some features, and then 10.4, a lot of people think Tiger was the uh, the apex of your classic PowerPC uh, OS. You don't hear much about 10.5. Uh, maybe 10.5 was the first Intel uh, OS 10, and then 10.6 Snow Leopard is the... Uh, the apex a lot of people think for the PowerPC or the uh, the Intel era of OS 10, and of course everybody using a Mac now. Most of the the younger people don't even remember that, and they've never known anything other than the post Lion, post weird file system ways of uh, of OS 10, which was one of the reasons why I left the the platform. It was I, I I hated Lion so much. And it was a combination of that and the depreciation of Aperture, which I'd used for years and years and years to organize my photos, to edit my photos, to create books. And they merged all of, of that development into photos. And uh, photos is just horrible. It's, just a, it just, it's not a great uh, beginner application and not a great advanced user application. So that's when I said adieu to the uh, Apple as a platform. I didn't realize that, Nigel. I didn't realize that the uh, iMac speakers were Harman Kardon. I had a pair of Harman Kardon sound sticks. Um, I want to say they were plastic. They were acrylic. I think that they were Harman Kardon. Um, they had kind of a round dome uh, subwoofer and then two cylinders that came up like that. They might have been JBL, but I think they were Harman Kardon, and I loved those. I thought they were fantastic. Okay, so we've cleaned the um, the outside of this as much as we can. Um, I'm going to probably go to work on the inside a little bit once we open it up, which let's do now. So as you can see, this, this thing's got some battle damage. It's not in uh, immaculate shape by any means. This is the G3 shining through like that was something that was only for the uh, the G3 the G4 towers didn't have that. Um, as I move this thing around, it's leaving a uh, a trail. Oh boy, sorry about that. It's leaving a trail of uh, dirt and debris. So I think on the bottom of this something needs cleaned, but we'll tackle that later on. Hello, Steve and Kathy. Hello from Waverly. I don't know where Waverly is. Um, it's interesting, though, guys, about the... Uh, I, I, I briefly had a G3 iMac. It was the machine we used to clock in and out of at work. And uh, But I don't... I didn't listen to a whole lot of music through the actual speakers. Okay. So we have opened this up. Let's... Go ahead and adjust our camera a little bit. I have this new Logitech webcam that's got a tilt and swivel base. And so uh, you should be able to zoom in. Not really zoom in, but you can focus on what we're looking at here. So um, this thing has a ATI Rage 128 GPU. And uh, looks like it's got a another expansion Port. I'm not sure um, what that what that is though. So we'll have a look at that. Um, we've got a drive, an IBM drive. I can't. Uh, 120 or I'm sorry, 128. 12 gigs um, ATA uh, drive. Looks like the drive that came with it. Um, and Looks like you got a drive underneath it too. This is a two-drive system. 
lots of things to look at in this. This is a pretty interesting. Um, this thing is uh, maxed out with RAM. Um, I also have a, one of the sticks is sticking out way too far. <laughs> That's probably an issue. Um, this is a stick of... Um, well, it's PC100 RAM, but there is no capacity on it. However, the rest, oh, I see. I bet that this is a, possibly a 128 stick. Uh, this is a, a very strange configuration here. Um, we've got a 258, uh, 128, 256, I'm guessing that this is a 128, so that would give us 640 megs of RAM. Okay, near Parkersburg. Well, that's, uh, I certainly know where Parkersburg is. Uh, awesome, glad to have some local folk uh, here in the chat. Oh wow, that's super cool, Nigel. I bet you could really make this thing scream. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and just uh, unseat the RAM and set it aside. We'll give the uh, slots a good spray. This was purchased from RAM Direct. Um, and of course, anybody involved in the PowerPC era of Macs know just how expensive RAM was back in the day. Uh, every meg was costing you. And this is the uh, special Mac RAM. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe this is uh, uh, this, these two machines have already been Frankenstein to some point. It's such a, a strange combination to have. Okay, um, the board itself looks fine. You know, there's no leaking of anything or anything like that. Um, I do want to take these cards out. Uh, I'm going to need a um, a screwdriver for that, and I'm also going to get a toothbrush uh, to use as an anti-static brush, um, and uh, and just kind of clean some of this dirt off so I can spray it off. So if you will give me a couple seconds, I will return shortly with the, that equipment. Be right back. screwdriver, got the toothbrush, we're ready to rock and roll, except for the fact that my microphone's over there. Oh man, Nigel, you were, you were rocking and rolling with that Pro Tool setup. That's part of my plan for this machine is to make this a uh, dedicated OS 9 machine and uh, put a Pro Tools setup on it and uh, and see what I can do with it. Go over to uh, OS 9 Lives. I plan on replacing the drives with um, 
an uh, IDE to SD solution and actually have multiple SD cards uh, where I can boot into different uh, setups, have a gaming setup, SD card. That's the ultimate dream. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, but it's, it's a very exciting time here. Um, next I'm going to remove the graphics card. off a little bit so yeah this is a uh, uh, there we go rage 128 ATI your classic power Mac um, graphics card believe that um, so I think the my G4 tower has a, a Raiden Radeon of uh, some kind. It, it has the ADC and VGA. Uh, fun fact, this is the first um, Mac, I believe, to ship with VGA uh, standard without the, um, the legacy uh, Apple display connectivity. So yeah, something, something there. Okay. Oh yeah, that's you're not kidding, Nigel. Uh, Macs have always been expensive, and uh, and when you load it up to, for a top config like that, you're spending big bucks. Although, if you look at the top end Macs from this era, even adjusting for inflation, today's Macs are much more expensive. Um, you could get a top of the line. G4 for you know I'd say probably twenty seven ninety nine and uh, look at the new Mac Pro you know so okay this is the mystery card um it's a SCSI SCSI to SE. That's what the uh, end port looks like. Any idea, chat, what that is? Um, you've got what well, looks like a uh, another port there. I don't know. I'm I'm no expert when it comes to hardware. I don't know what that might be. Um, but we'll give it a good dusting. This is um, light on, 0, 1, V, 0. Um, yeah, this is sort of a, um, this is some sort of an, ad an adapter, but I just don't know for what, for what purpose. Just a SCSI card. Ah, good thinking, Nigel. The, uh, The first um, computer I bought with my Apple employee discount in 2004 was a Power Mac G5. It was definitely the worst <laughs> financial computing decision I've ever made as uh, it was the low end G5. It was so low end, uh, I could've, I'm sure I could have bought an iMac G4 that performed better, that was cheaper. Um, but I bought that and the flat panel display and it looked really nice but I did not I had nothing that could use it to its full potential and that was the issue it's just a lot of grime on the uh white plastic parts 
I don't know if that's oxidization from the copper or, or what. Yeah, everything else on the board looks okay though. So it's really the only dirt is on there. It's uh, PC cards slots. Another fun thing, you know, just future expandability. Looking to see what what else I might be able to pick up and uh, put in here. It's a strange, um, I guess this plastic or this metal bracket here um, basically just keeps the wires out of the way. This is where the majority of the dirt is, is on this metal piece here. I tell you, these Swiffer dusters are amazing at the amount of grime that they can pick up. Move on to this one here. Um, I'm torn because I know I'll be able to pick up a ton of dirt if I take this metal plate off, but at the same time, it's like, does it really matter? Do I do I need to get all of the dirt out of there and all that grime? I know the hard drives are going to come out of this thing for sure. I'll just kind of work my way in on the side here. There's a lot of grime built up. Next uh, computer club meeting, uh, the next real computer club meeting will be on November Fifth, I think the first first Saturday in November, and we'll be taking another look at my um, Silicon Graphics workstation, the O2 Plus. Um, it was working, and then it started to not work. <laughs> but even when it was working, I didn't have a PS2 mouse, so I couldn't actually do anything with it. So uh, I'll be taking it out and uh, resetting the jumpers, which I guess is the the first step getting it back into operation. I will say though that, you know, uh, this thing is in pretty good condition for having set, you know, dormant for as long as I'm sure that it did. Um, at least it's not one of the G5s with the water cooling that's sure to explode over everything. Okay, so, uh, the board seems pretty good, you know, uh, seems fine. Um, boy, I'm tempted just to fire this thing up, put the RAM back in and the cards back in and uh, just see if it, if it loads and see what's on the drive. Um, let me clean out these uh, fan ports here. But I just wanted to make sure and check that nothing was uh, seated incorrectly that would impede booting of the system. And it's possible that this thing still won't boot even when I even when we turn it on. But there's only one way to find out, right? And we can't really mess it up worse than it already is, if it is. So. Um, I guess we'll stick this the SCSI card back in. Yeah. Now, Nigel, if you're still 
Oh, thanks. Thanks, Steve and Kathy. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, this will go up and be archived. And if, if there's anything you want to comment on later on, just let me know. And, uh, and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Like I said, I've got another one of these G3s we're going to be taking apart too here before too long. Ah, interesting. A little old school overclocking. I've never really had, uh, I've always been too cautious uh, to overclock any of my computers. I have a, uh, the computer that this is being recorded on now is an i7-4790K. And I guess the K means that it is a processor designed to be overclocked, but I've always felt that the speed was satisfactory. Yeah, maybe overclocking the G3 will be a future installment of this series. Okay, graphics cards back in. Let's reseat the RAM. This odd. Let's see. So is, uh, oh my gosh, there's a huge centipede just rolling across my floor. Um, is uh, summer in full swing now, Nigel? I know that today was a little warmer here, but we're well into the fall in West Virginia. This is, yeah, 120 meg. is the odd stick. I want to say this is probably the stick that it shipped with. I, w I don't know what the minimum amount of RAM that this might have shipped with, but it might have been 128 meg. Oh, that's awesome. I'd love to have that job. I'm surprised the government bought that many iMacs. I don't think our government was as keen on using Apple's. Okay, so everything seems to be back in its proper place. I'll just push on all the cables. A vain attempt to uh, make sure everything is all right. Ooh, that, that doesn't look good. Hold on. I don't even know what that's. Maybe there's nothing there. That's like a for a zip drive. It's just an empty bay. Okay. Oh. All right. Everything looks pretty okay. So let's close it up and plug it in and turn it on. One thing I forgot to get was a uh, keyboard and mouse. This does have a legacy ADB connection, so I will be using an ADB keyboard and mouse to be super cool. 
Okay. And this USB is actually powering a, um, a VGA splitter to send a signal to both the monitor in front of me and the monitor on the capture card if this works. But here we go. Well, I'll turn it towards you so you can see the green light. Oh, I heard the chime. Uh-oh. But we're getting a ticking in the hard drive area. And we are not getting posting from the uh, to the monitor. So that means that something's wrong. But we expected that. So we'll power it back off, unplug, and continue the journey. Okay. But it will be interesting to see what drives are installed in this thing. Like I said, there's two hard drives, I believe, in here. this first one out. Oh, it's attached by a screw. Really need a little stubby guy. My microphone is not helping me out. The cord is too short. What is that, Nigel? A geo port adapter? Uh, is that uh, the pre ADB connection? I don't even know. I don't even know. Man, how do you get that? That screw. That's crazy. How would anybody ever get to that? Hmm. Well, that's just really not cool. Um, can I lift this whole enclosure out? Let's unplug the second drive. Maybe that's where I'm. Where's this thing? So this thing looks like it's bolted. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Man. This last power connector is being obstinate. Okay, so now that we've removed those, we should be able to, let's see, how do you, okay. Yeah, I know this is not a perfect angle. Let me see if I can raise this up a little bit more. You can see what I'm doing. Uh, still not perfect. But um, anyway, uh, there's an enclosure here that, uh, that I'm going to lift out. So if I unscrew this, the whole shebang. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I dimly remember that from my Apple history. Okay, so now this caddy, which is actually missing on my G4. Um, so I may be salvaging one of these to put in my G4. 
And we do have uh, dual drives. It'll be interesting to see um, what the other drive is. Oops. But this drive does look like it's. <laughs> It looks like a drive that's 20 years old. And we'll definitely take an opportunity to clean this area. Okay, so we have, uh, I guess this is the system drive. Um, it's 12 gigs. And then we have a 40 gigabyte Barracuda drive as the secondary drive. Um, interesting that this is, um, the, the warranty is voided if the, um, the drive experiences shock in excess of 350 G's. But what I think I'm going to end up having to do is uh, getting a new boot, getting a boot CD for this computer and just having to start from scratch. That drive is a clicking, and that means it's probably dead. This drive looks okay. I mean, just by looking at the outside of it, um, it still looks like it's in pretty good shape. This drive here, it just looks old. Although it's got this um, covering over the uh, the thing there. I haven't seen that before. Um, yeah, but I'm sure that this was the original drive that came with the system. Um, let's see. Yeah, the... Hmm. So this is set at uh, cable select. The jumpers are set at cable select. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, but uh, yeah, it's also got some stuff kind of growing on the outside of it. Not too encouraging. Um, I could put it back in and uh, adjust the jumper to make it believe that it's only this is the only drive and see if that makes any difference you can try that just move that jumper over and uh, see if it'll kick on Automatically selects the price. Oh, okay. Thanks, uh, Inner Tranquility. That uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, as you can see here, uh, well, you can't really see because the fidelity is not that great. But anyway, um, I've set it to to master instead of cable select, just just to try. Um, but. I am going to clean the inside of this bad boy out before we do anything else because it's just in rough shape. What I really need is one of those little dust busters, although these, these Swiffer things do a pretty good job of just picking up grime. I often wonder for how many years, you know, Aaron got these computers from the same guy that he got his recent Amiga haul from. 
and I often wonder how many years these set dialect in a garage, you know, or an attic, basement. And then one day they just, they're asked to perform again. That's pretty cool. Oh, geez. Blew the uh, tip right off there. Yeah, there's an Apple, there's an Apple logo on the on the drive sticker, uh, Marcos the Black, for sure. Hey Stefano, just doing a little uh, Saturday night computer club. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it could be this IDE cable too. Um, these things don't last forever. Hey, Foxconn. Okay, so we will uh, put this back in the mount here. Yeah, I'm getting, uh, there's actually no no signal at all is passing through the VGA cable. Um, so uh, I've reseeded the RAM, which one of the sticks was uh, out completely beforehand. So that, but the drive clicking is definitely leading me to believe that it is the drive that is uh, the problem. But that's not a big problem. Um, thanks to the power of the internet and me having a bunch of spare IDE drives around um, I could easily make a boot CD and reinstall Mac OS on this thing I do plan on uh, if nothing else harvesting this caddy for my G4 though <laughs> Flash the PRAM, man, that brings back memories. That was the uh, that was the ultimate bit of advice for whenever whenever things went wrong on the Mac back in the day. Um, let's see, where is the PRAM button here? There it is. I see it. We'll we'll flash the PRAM just for old times' sake, Nigel. You missed out, Inner Tranquility. You don't want to get in the game now, in my opinion. Classic Max are where it's at. Okay. Yeah, this is this is not an all-in-one. This is a tower, uh, Stefano. This is the uh, G3 blue and white Power Mac. Um, but there was a G3 uh, iMac that was the the original. Uh, no, it wasn't. The, you know, the the original all-in-one colored iMac was this processor line. And it debuted about the same time as this computer did. Okay. That's in there. All right. Every time I look around, every time I look around, I see more dust and dirt. Okay. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, and we're gonna flash the old P RAM. C 
See you, Michael. Have a good dinner, man. Oh, this is uh, oh, this is the uh, the modem here. No, you can't. Yeah, this thing's sticking out. All right, so. The, the case design is ingenious. There still has never been a better case design than the G3 and G4 Max, the way they fold out. It's so easy to work on. Okay. Let's give it a try. I heard the, the chime. And we're not getting the clicking that we got before, which is a good sign. However, the bad sign is that uh, we are still not getting any signal to the monitor. Um, however, just for fun, let's see if the capture card is getting a signal. Nope, sure not. No, I don't, Nigel. I don't remember that. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, though. Okay. Um, oops. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. My uh, here's what I think, guys. I think that the um, the uh, the graphics card on this thing is no good. I think that that is the issue. Uh, I just don't think that it's getting. Because uh, I'm getting on the monitor here, which I can show you. Whoop. Cable not connected. So um, the uh, the graphics card can be replaced. Um, so that's that's it's definitely not a big deal. Um, but uh, we can uh, try that out. Um, maybe we'll make that our, our next episode is uh, trying out the graphics card or swapping out the graphics card. Uh, try try jerk with the cable. Sure, I'll try whatever you guys want. Okay, so Okay, so um, so you're you're telling me to disconnect the IDE cable from the hard drive? Is that right? Yeah, I could. Uh, the the card actually doesn't look too bad. Um, I don't have a. Uh, I don't have all my my rubbing alcohol and stuff down here. So um, 
but if I, I guess if I don't have, yeah, I guess I can just pull, like you said, pull the IT cable from the drive. I'll get a happy, or I'll get a Mac, I'll get a Mac, uh, the Mac will boot and then I'll get the question mark. So we'll try it. Here we go. So I've removed the IDE cable. Okay. Oh. Reconnect power to the system. Okay. I'll swing this around so you can see what I see. I said we're get the bong. Yeah, it's it's fantastic, Stefano. Oh, you know what I haven't done is connect the VGA. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm just getting no no signal whatsoever. Yeah, nothing, nothing at all. I'm just getting a blue blinking light, which phone is blocking you from seeing and getting the old blue blinking light there. So yeah, it's not an onboard GPU, it's a, it's a card. So uh, um, we'll try resetting the card again. Yeah, the um, as someone who's cleaned a lot of NES carts in my life, I can tell you that those connectors look pretty good. So I would say it's probably not the connectors. Um, it could be the it could be a bad slot. I mean, that's always a possibility, uh, although it's unlikely. I think that the uh, there's more of a chance that this card has just gone kaput. Um, we'll reseed it and try it one more time. Yeah, um, if this doesn't work, on the next episode, um, I will, uh, not only will I have rubbing alcohol and pencil erasers and lots of other fun stuff at the ready, but I will also have um, a whole, my whole other uh, G3, Yikes G3, um, and uh, I'll be able to uh, take some parts, swap some parts around out of that. Okay, one more time. Okay, so here goes our. Uh, yeah, I, I've uh, I've I've disconnected the splitter already. That was my first step because that's that's always the thing that's gonna hurt you first. Okay, that time we didn't even get a startup bong. 
I wonder if I just know because I've powered it down. Let's try one more time. Okay, I got the startup bong that time. Hey, I've got a solid blue light, guys. Look at that. It's something. <laughs> Yeah. So um, that's great. That means that uh, that we have um, we have liftoff. Now, uh, I did plan on stopping the episode here um, because uh, I am going to look at the contents of the hard drive off the air. Um, as much as I would love to uh, do this for the first time on a stream. As you guys know, we live in a day and age where people do not great things with their computers. And I do want to make sure that there is no inappropriate content on these hard drives before I open them up blindly for the world to see. Um, so, but however, we will try one more place or we'll try one more thing. We'll see if we can get the splitter to split. There we go. Sorry, guys. So um, I had my scene set up wrong. Okay. So, but anyway, um, the uh, just to recap, the uh, the iMac works. Ba -da -da -da. Or not the iMac, the Power Mac, and the splitter works. So whatever I see on the screen from now on, you guys can see. Um, I can change scenes at any time by going back to here so if we need to look at something on the computer we can go back and forth like that so we are set up for goodness um, for uh, for you know testing out some software testing out some different versions of Mac OS maybe put eight on here maybe put nine I don't know we'll see what's on the hard drive uh, tune in. Make sure you tune in next time uh, for uh, the next edition of the Taze Valley and Classic Computer Club, which I plan on making this regular thing on Saturday nights. Uh, and uh, if you don't have anything to do tomorrow, um, you can tune in. Aaron is going to be here probably around 11 o'clock Eastern, which should be sometime in the early evening for you folks in Europe. And uh, we are going to record Amigos and Our Sinclair tomorrow um, because uh, I had some previous commitments on Friday. So um, you can tune in tomorrow for 
some podcast action. And uh, thank you, Picard. Or Picard just showed up. Hey, Picard. Uh, thank you, Stefano, for being here. Inner Tranquility. Uh, welcome. I don't remember seeing you before, but you're always welcome here on the stream. Uh, Nigel and uh, Ma Marcos the Black 2010. Thank you for being here. Bombast. All you guys, uh, it's been a fun, a fun stream. So anyway, uh, I will see you guys next time. Until then, adios.